Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Benzo. You're watching my channel, Benzo14, and I'm here doing a review of Family or Fiance, the episode of Reggie and Jasmine. All right, this is my second take doing the video, just like Life at the Lockup. I don't know what's going on today, but that fuzziness in the video, I hate that, so I had to redo it again. All right, but this episode wasn't that much drama filled. It was just simple things that needed to be done, and most likely, most likely, it was the relationship the individual need to have with their own pain with their own parents that will form and once they heal that then they will be great as a communion as a couple because I like I said people the family come together wasn't even that much insight that needed to be done because there was no issues between the marriage themselves or the couple themselves it was mostly the issue of the relationship they had to have outside their own relationship that needs to be healed before this communion which is those two could work because if they both two broken people cannot help the relationship so they need to heal their little fences and work or at least work on that all right so jasmine and Reggie be together for seven years on and off for seven years then she moved to atlanta some way he wanted to come out of divorce not trying to divorce her trying to convince her to stay where they was at and that goes atlanta but she decided she held better with atlanta she just wanted to go away so they've been a, away from each other. The relationship been mostly long distance. Mainly long distance. I don't know if I could deal with a long distance relationship. But some people can. And it works out for them. But their relationship has been long distance. And recently, like a month ago, they've been in the same town. I said, wow. So y'all had y'all really not together for all this long time. And they have recently been in the same town together. And y'all go out to get engaged. Oh, well, y'all engaged, about to get married. I said, oh, all right, shoot, okay. But she said her relationship with her mother, Joy, is a strange one. It's a distance between those two because Jasmine built this narrative that she had to be perfect and be good enough or not feel good enough for her mother because she's been adopted. And maybe she feel like she needs to supersede her biological roots or biological aspects to be the daughter that Joy want her to be. That's what she built on that. That's the story that she came with. Even though that's not be the reality that was, was presented, but that's the stuff that she formed based on how she felt. So she kept that distance and felt that that closeness is scary for her with Joy because it feels safe to keep that distance because that feeling of being adopted and feel like you wasn't with your own family, your biological family. You were someone who couldn't have kids, so you felt this little need of pressure that, okay, I've been adopted by this woman, then I need to be perfect for her because it is what it is. Terry, on, on the other hand, with his father is the aspect that his father has been around. It's like the typical thing that his father been locked up and he has been missing a lot of milestones in Reggie's life. Reggie going around feel like he's not being bothered by it, but in actuality he is bothered that his father was around when he needed to be, when he was growing up. So he needs to have that relationship because his father coming around thinking that everything was all peaches and cream, everything was good, and there was no issues with them, which it was actually all issues. Where it is, you wasn't there. Little League games. You're not there in the little milestones, prom, sex, adulthood, transitioning, with adolescence. That's a major milestone you should be there in your kid's life. And you feel like because you was giving the kids food, clothes, and shelter, that's all you they need. I said no. That's a necessity that needs to be brought upon a responsibility as a parent. But also a responsibility as a parent is to be there emotionally, mentally, physically, all that aspect needs to be there. Because you're not emotionally involved and you're not there investing in your kids, they never feel like you wasn't there. And you could be physically say, oh yeah, I was there and I know you wasn't. Because if you've been missing a lot of the milestones and little periods of their child's life, how much were you there? Just because you said you was there physically and you just had to provide? No, that's all. And we need to stop teaching our men that they all they need to do and provide and teach them that they also, yes, you be a provider, but also be a, if you have kids, you have to be the parent 
for your kids, not just financially. You got to be there emotionally as well. It's not just up to the mother to be the emotional aspect for the kids. So that's what, that was that issue with change, though. So though it should they all have to have their individual parents to build a better bond for themselves, so they can have a better person better themselves to be a better husband and wife who lose each other. We also find out that Reggie is a minister, so she would be a preacher's wife. We didn't have that. We didn't delve into her scariness or her being a preacher's wife and the responsibilities and the limelight and the stuff like she had, the spotlight and the stuff that she had to deal with as being a preacher's wife. Cause I could, I could say that could be a lot of responsibilities and stress that I put on being a preacher's wife than being a regular wife for somebody else. But that wasn't focused upon. So I guess her, she's, it's scary for her, but I don't think she's that Afraid of being a preacher's wife. Could they have been together for a long time, so it's good. It's like a Reggie is a good man. So, you know, a family fiance, they have three days spent together. If you never watch a show, this is my first time watching a review, they do three days together. They have a family meeting, they discuss all the issues, and then they work on the issues based on the activities that Chase has given them throughout the time. Then they do a second check in at this day two and find out whatever's was not resolved, give further tasks if needed. And then the third day, they do the family blessings at the little final check with Tracy. And see, they get the family blessings with a yes or no. And if they decided, and after they hit the blessings, they decided they want to stay as a couple or leave and choose their family. All right. So Reggie brought his mom, Charlotte, his father, Terry, and his brother, Adrian, to the show. And then Jasmine brought. Her mom, Joy, her stepfather, LV, and her best friend, and man of honor, Tanisha. So, throughout the family meeting, a couple of things were brought up. Well, it wasn't really much of issues. It was basically, do you understand marriage? Divorce is not an option. It's take communication with, the, with, the, with each other. Do you know how to communicate with each other? Do you know how to undergo the obstacles that everybody face as a couple? That would make some of the concerns. Two that stand out is that one of them said, Adrian said he want Reggie and Joy to bond so Joy could accept Reggie as the son-in-law. And Charlotte want her son to bond with her father in a deeper level. Or at least build, start working on that building and that relationship. So that was it. It wasn't really much of an issue. Now, Joy said, Joy the mom said she did, and Jasmine has been doing everything I wanted her to be. I never portrayed to her that she needed to be perfect. I don't know where she get that. Maybe I failed as a parent to portray that to make her feel that it was about her being perfection. I just want her to be the best that she could be. And I, and maybe now she started lacking her parents because maybe she had not done the right job and raising her to make her feel like she had to be this. Yes, maybe she has a high standard for both each other. They both have high standards within, each, within themselves. But at the same time, they both never express how well the other person did or what you have done. Because that simple words mean so much to a person. When you never express something and then people start building this narrative and forming their head that, and I'm good enough? She never said I'm good enough. I always got to feel this way. I always got to do this. I always got to do that. Did I get, when I was a good parent, did I raise them right? Why they all feel like I always, they always battling me and they always angry at me. What have I done? So this is stuff that you always form in your head as both parents and as a child that you don't even know what to say, but only simple words from each other will make the whole difference. That's why I say words does help. It does heal things when you speak to the person, but you keep your distance and not saying anything. That's what it caused a problem. All right, so that was that and then it was a topic about the ex, which I have a little problem with that. Now, for me, personally, if I broke up with an ex and it did not end with a good terms, then nobody in my family should still talk to that ex. Cut it off. That's it. Especially I'll let you know. I said, no, this person did to me. We don't even have any more communication with them. If especially if I move on with somebody else, then you should never be communicating with the ex. Now, if it was not bad terms, whatever, 
like I said, there's no general written rule rule of talking to your child's ex. It's not wrong with that. Cause a lot of people in the, in the show said it's not wrong with that. It's about a respect. And boundaries need to be placed on talking to the person in front of their current boyfriend, fiance, husband. Because that is a sign of disrespect. If you're talking to the ex or you're answering the phone or FaceTiming them while the other person is there. Now, if you want to do that in your own private time, that's fine. That's your own private time. Nobody can tell you who you need to talk to, what you need to do. You're a grown woman. Nobody can tell you what to do. But it's a sign of respect and boundaries we need to have. When you have the future possible son-in-law up there there and feel, figuring that you want the ex to be with your daughter so bad, bad more than Reggie. And Reggie feeling that you feel like you want her to marry him and not him. To marry that ex and not him himself. And she said, no, I never I never said that. I never did this or that. I don't understand what's the issue, what's the problem. And if, I, if you feel that way, I said, that's what I say. You can't give an apology with an if. It's not if he felt that way. He felt that way. So if you want to sincerely apologize, apologize and say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And I didn't understand how you was coming from. Now I understand your feelings. I completely apologize for what I have been doing. Because I did not want you to feel left out, feel like, I don't want you in my child's life because I do like you and I want to build a better bond. But if you can't build that bond with him, if you still have attachment to the ex, like I said, it's not wrong to talk to him. But at the same time, I really don't really, you shouldn't be really talking to the ex. If she broke up with him, she broke up with him. But, and that's what it is. You can have the conversation, but have the respect. So if you had a dinner table with Reggie, if Reggie around in the ex core, don't answer the text. Don't answer it. Just let it be and call him another time. So that way he won't feel like you asked him to call and this is disregarding his presence. That was that. So she, the mom got emotional about the distance with her daughter and that ex thing. So she walked away and got crying. And I said, okay. So when that came about, they had the little dinner and they cooked like, like breakfast food. I think they really, really... The family don't really, really cook like that. So they was like, oh, cooking. So Charlotte, Reggie Ma, she said, oh, y'all, I'll watch y'all cook. And I sit behind this, you know, we all cooking. And they started laughing. I said, oh, okay. So they did that. They talk. And it wasn't really much going on with that. They just want to express the relationship with Terry and Reggie and get a relationship with those two. And she expressed that Reggie does feel bothered by you not being around. But the father always thinking that he did, like, and he was around. But you could be physically there, but you had to be not put present. And that's exactly what wasn't there. And the fact that you were in jail a couple of times in and out of your life, and then your father did that to you, that you think you're doing that to your Reggie, and you're creating the same aspect of what your father did to you. Now you feel like you did things because that's what you've done. And since Reggie never told you, you don't know. So you need to have that conversation. So when they had to sit down with Tracy, they brought up. All this again. Meanwhile, the mom Joy was so um, she was so hurt about everything because she said she felt as a mother. She didn't know what she did. She did everything she can for Jasmine. I don't know what's went wrong. I don't know what if I done wrong. Nobody say anything. I don't know. She just felt like she fell. So Tracy had to excuse herself for Jasmine Reggie because she said your mom is down. I need to see what she's going on. So she. I said, I want you to let you know that you did right. I want you to believe that you did right for her. And you can say that so you can believe in yourself. And so, Tracy went back. She said, you know what? I have a different task for you. Reggie, you need to have a vulnerable conversation with your father. Talk to him. Be vulnerable. Let him, let him know your feelings of him being, not being there. So he could know that he wasn't there as he thought he was. You, Jasmine, I have a family and therapist, family marriage therapist that sit down with y'all and talk to y'all about things, especially since you're the doctor and your feelings and foster care, and sit down and talk. So Jasmine Muller did, and they sat down and they really had to talk in a conversation. And they said they mainly want communication within each other and also feel to be told 
that did it right. So the mom said, you had done right. You, you raised, you've been the best leader person. You've been the person I raised you to be. You've been the person. You are proud. I'm proud of you. I love you. You've been the woman. I'm proud of how much you have become, what you have done. So don't think I don't understand that. You have been the person and you've been great. And at the same time, Joy said, you have been a great mom. You have been a great person raising me. You, I see that you sacrificed. Simple, simple words like that means a lot. And the fact that they never expressed that towards each other shows that there has been lack of communication because they've been keeping the distance. So now they can work on better their relationship and have the communication and knowing that Jasmine knows that her mom appreciates her appreciate the woman that she became and no more you don't need to teach her that's money now you did what you had to do now you just got to be there and support her as the mother and that's so much of parenting just being there as a mother and meanwhile terry and reggie they talk and they had a conversation and reggie let him know that you hasn't been there for me you missed a lot of things i was looking for you to be there and you was not around he was not allowed, so when I went to college, it was my way to escape. Because he did mention, Terry mentioned in the episode that he hadn't talked to his old son for like a month. I said, that's crazy for the bit of long time that I talked to your old child. So, when Reggie expressed that, Terry didn't really know. He really thought he was doing the right thing, but now he realized he wasn't doing right. So he could, now he could be a better person and be the better father for his son and be there. So Reggie said, just be my friend. Just be there. Be there as much as you can as a father and be as a friend so we can build this relationship so they can work on that. So then he said he agreed to do that. So now he started to have the better understanding, open his eyes. Because since Terry didn't have that aspect with his father, he thought he was doing the same thing and we had to break that pattern. Because if Reggie would start having kids with Jasmine, he don't want to have that same pattern with his own kids. So we have to have that pattern broken. And it's got fact that they work on that now. So it will better further their relationship so he can be a better man for his wife, Jasmine. And now when Jasmine and Joy work on theirs, she will be a better wife for her husband, Reggie. So that was a final that was a final thing. They did a final check-in. Everything was worked out well. They both had a better understanding with their own parents. So now they could be good. Because I, I didn't feel anything thing that it would be an issue between Reggie and Jasmine being together. I feel like they do really love each other. They really do generally care for each other. They love each other. It's just that their own personal battles was interfering their communion. Which they had to work on that. So it was not much about their, parent, their relationship. It was more about the outside forces. So they had the blessing ceremony. Everybody said yes. And like I said, it cut off. So I didn't know the update. Whether they continue to marry, brother, what I believe it will be. So I don't have any doubts that they will get married and they will continue on being a successful couple. So that was like, that was not life in the locker. That was family and fiance, y'all. It comes on Saturdays on own at 9 o'clock if y'all want to watch it. If not, you can watch my reviews. I appreciate it. But like I said in my other bash videos, I could put clips if I see the clips on YouTube and put it on my comment section so you can watch some of the clips. And give me your feedback and opinions, alright? So, please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.